Aircraft carriers are the strongest warships in the world. However, the bottom of these huge ships is usually wafer thin. How is it possible the ship with thousands of sailors can stay afloat, and why is the bottom so thin? What's this knife-thin bottom of an aircraft carrier called? It's referred to as the hull. The hull's design considers the different kinds of seas they may sail through. Since it travels across the ocean, an aircraft carrier is subject to the possibility of experiencing rough seas. You might not expect it, but actually, the hull is not thin at all. Of course, it is thinner than the rest of the ship, but there are lots of decks below the waterline with lots of storage and facilities. Aircraft carriers, like all ships, are knife-thin at the bow to cut through the water. As you move aft, carriers are flat on the bottom. It can also look so thin because the flight deck is so flat. It has the same dimensions as the hulls of cruise ships and many others. It rises out of the water in a curved shape to balance the weight of the deck and the tower. Because of how the hull is designed, it is less probable that high waves will swamp the ship. So how will a knife-thin bottom help a ship scale through the sea? What it does is that it allows aircraft carriers to navigate heavy waves relatively easily. How does such a large city stay afloat? It's very simple and at the same time almost impossible to imagine. If there is air in something, it can float. Ships float on water, but nails and marbles sink. A ship is made of iron and so is a nail. A ship is heavy and a nail is light, yet the ship floats and the nail doesn't. How is this possible? So that is very simple. It's the air. And if there is air in anything, it can float. Try pushing a jar with a lid underwater. It comes back up. And so a big steel ship can also float because the ship is full of air. But how can a submarine float and also sink? A special system of air chambers allows the submarine to float and sink. Water or air can be pumped into the empty chambers of the ship. This allows the crew to steer the submarine. The Navy uses submarines to get intelligence about the waters where they send warships. A submarine sails there in advance to find out what the boats are there and sailing around and what they are doing there. When the submarine has gathered all the information and the coast is safe, the warships are sent. A submarine floats and sinks because of a special system of air chambers. Think of it like swimming belts. When the submarine has to dive, the crew fills the air chambers with water so the submarine becomes heavy and sinks. Then. When the submarine is forced to surface again, the water is squeezed out of the air chambers and it floats up by itself. Let's go back to the ship's hull. The ship's hull is the most visible and important component of a ship's architecture and is located below the waterline. It is the watertight enclosure of the ship. This enclosure shields the ship's cargo, machinery and living quarters from structural damage caused by turbulent sea waves. Hulls aren't just found in aircraft carriers, but they're also seen in other types of sea vessels. The hull of a standard wooden sailboat is made of wooden planking and is supported by transverse frames, which are frequently referred to as ribs and bulkheads. Additionally, the hull is held together by longitudinal stingers or roofs. The structure of hulls made by fiberglass or composite materials may to some extent mimic that of wooden or steel boats but may be arranged in a monocoque fashion. Often, composite hulls are constructed by sandwiching thin fiber reinforced skins over a lightweight but moderately rigid core made of foam, balsa wood, impregnated paper honeycomb, or another material. This creates a structure that is both lightweight and rigid. An additional structure that may be found beneath an aircraft carrier and contributes to the ship's ability to sail smoothly even in rough seas is called a bulbous bow. A ship's bulbous bow is characterized by a projecting bulb located at the vessel's bow or front, just below the waterline. Because of the modification that the bulb makes to the way the water flows around the hull, the boat's speed, range, fuel efficiency, and stability are all improved. Large ships that have bulbous bows often have a fuel efficiency that is 12 to 15% better than that of comparable vessels that don't have them. A bulbous bow enhances the buoyancy of the forward part of the ship, which in turn results in a slight reduction in the pitching that the ship experiences. That'll be all for today's video. Thanks for staying tuned. Let us know what you think of this topic in the comments. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you can always get to watch more amazing videos like this. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.